Uh, I don't know if listen to um, everybody on Wake Up With Jesus. This gentleman that, the, the, the gentleman that I least expected to give me the title for my sermon today said something very powerful the other day when he said, the things that God does is what? Necessary. 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 Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. Hmm. I hope it's not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. It's me, oh Lord. Testament of our lives, knowing that now we are leaving something new for those that are coming behind, behind us. And Lord, our new will bring somebody out of their old. We thank you right now, Lord, for being with us right now. We give you honor and glory because you're with us right now. Everything that's coming out of our mouth is coming from God right now. So now we shall hear you and obey you by doing whatever you tell us to do right now. And, and you will always tell us in the now to love your brothers and sisters when, right? Now. No matter what they do, you shall love them, right? Now. When they upset you, you shall love them, right? Now. When they do what they're supposed to do, you should love them, right? Now. Because we live in the what testament? Right now. The now testament of God. So now, Lord, you get ready to show us the Father of Heaven we've never, ever seen before. We say thank you. Thank you. And amen. Amen. And amen. And thank you. Wow. Something I never thought about until, you know, I, I, I knew, but, but, but I never really thought about it until I, I, I heard the word. I was thinking about just taking this sermon today and turning it into a lesson of the heart. I really was. And I still might do it. This word necessary. We, we don't even realize the power of the word necessary. Everything in your life is what? Necessary. necessary. But the thing is, we, we have been hoodwinked about why it is necessary. Why is it necessary for me to come to church? Why is it necessary for me to go through? Why is it necessary for me to believe in Jesus? Why is it necessary for me to seek God? We don't, if we ever find out the why, we'll never question what God is doing again. Amen? If you have your Bible, I want to, I want to read four, four verses to you, five verses to you, 20, 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12, 22 through 26. Word of God reads, New Living Translation. Word of God reads, New Living Translation. You may rest, you may rest in your seat. You may rest in your seat. Tomorrow night, somebody say tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Please, please, I need, I need at least the people that are here, including you, um, um, Sister Maul. I really need you tomorrow night. I got a guest tomorrow. I need, I need at least the people that are here, and I pray that you bring somebody. I got a guest speaker coming in. I'm about to cut out Power God Monday night. I really am. Because all they do is cost me another day at the hotel to come over here and sit with six people. If I get one person that says, Bishop, don't cut it out, I keep coming. Can I get one? Okay, that's all I need. That's all I need. As long as I know I'm not laboring in what? Vain. Amen. So, so, but tomorrow night we got Apostle Mohorn. And you know what? We really we really need to support this guy. Because every time we need his sanctuary, a oh, phone yes. running, a, a, a ordination ceremony, he gives us his 800 seat sanctuary for no charge. No charge. Out of the friendship for me and him. My Lord, yes. So the least we can do is support him tomorrow night. Mr. Mr. Monday Night Excuse. Mr. Monday Night Excuse. 
you 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 listen, you, you, listen my, yeah, you know who I'm talking about. Nietzsche tomorrow night. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Praise the Lord. All right, so tomorrow night, Pastor Mohan, we're going to be here. We're going to support him. He's going to bring some people with him, and he's got a prayer tower that's been that's been changing people's lives. That's really what made me invite him. Got a prayer prayer tower. The prayer tower is seven dollars. But when, when, when he, he, I heard some testimonies on his phone when people calling him that were using that prayer tower. And it is phenomenal. It is phenomenal. So I said, you know what? Why don't you come over and expose the saints at the Spirit of Jesus? He, he said, Bishop, I would love to. I would love to. So he'll be here tomorrow night, 7 30, all right? And I'm going I'm to, I'm don't worry, I'm going to give him a 40 minute time limit so we won't be here all night, okay? All right? Because we know how some of the homeless people can be. They don't know how to get out of church. Amen? All right, 22, um, first, first Corinthians 12, 22 through 26, the Word of God reads, New Living Translation. In fact, some parts of the body that seem the what weakest and least important, uh-oh, are actually the most what? Important. Necessary. What? Necessary. Some parts of the body, Chevy Shell, what's up, girl? Some parts of the body. Yeah, no, this is special that she came to church and I didn't even have to press her. She <laughs> said, in fact, some parts of the body that seem the weakest, ain't that some? And the least important are actually the most necessary. And the parts we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that we should not that should not be seen, while the more honorable parts do not require this special care. So God has put the body together such that extra honor and care are given to those who have less dignity outreach today. That was necessary. Somebody that was going to commit suicide this week is not going to commit suicide because the Spirit of Jesus went out today and gave him hope. That was necessary. We're so concerned, you know, I'm, I'm, about, I'm about to drop the title of bishop, drop, about to drop the title of pastor. I'm, I'm about to just let y'all call me Brother Rob. I'm over people seeking titles and forgetting what they're supposed to be doing with the title. Necessary. Yeah. Everything in your and think about think about how you got into this world. According to God, you didn't you didn't have to have your mom and daddy get together because we, we we saw that it, he could do it without mom and daddy getting together because Jesus came in here without a mom and daddy getting together. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. But according to our understanding, it is what part of the necessary. Anybody hear me? So my thing is, my thing is, in you getting here, this is the sad part about it. You might have got here with, because of love between your mom and daddy, mm -hmm. or not. Stop concerning yourself with whether mom and daddy loved each other when they when they when, you, when they conceived you and know that God loved you enough to bring you whether they loved you or not. Hello, somebody. What was necessary was to get here with the love of God. And if I can see God's love is necessary for me to get here, don't you know I know it's necessary for God's love to sustain me? It's necessary for God's love to keep me. But I got to get to a place where I understand the power and the value of, of what is necessary. And, it, and, it, and, it, and if it's necessary for God's love to keep me and sustain me, it's necessary for me to keep my mind on God if I want the peace that surpasses all understanding. Uh, in the middle span the other day, he said this word necessary and he took me somewhere. I said, Oh my God, I never, I knew these things, but you know how you know something, but you never really think about it? It was necessary for us to meet God, it was necessary for Jesus to go to Calvary. And for us to need God, it was necessary for, 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 for Eve to listen to, to Lucifer. Yeah, but hear this. Everything that goes on in your life is necessary.
necessary? What is it necessary for? So I can, Pastor, go to, go to, go to, go to 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians um, 13, I think it starts at 4. Um, 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 1 Corinthians 13 and 4. I want y'all to hear this. What is this necessary for? I ain't going to be here long. It ain't because the football won't be there because the dogs are going to play at 4 o'clock. But I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not concerned about that because I made, I made it necessary for us to get out of church at 12 o'clock even when it ain't football season. So I can be, y'all won't think I'm doing the cop of football season, but when I made, made the time, well, football had something to do with it. <laughs> Necessary. Read that for me, Pastor. Love is patient and kind. Wait, wait. Love is what? Patient. Now, when she reads, I need all y'all to repeat. Read, Pastor. Love is patient. Love is patient. And kind. And kind. Now, you have spoken this. Have you ever been kind to somebody you love? Tell the truth. Yes, you have. Come on, huh? Have you ever been, have you ever been unkind to somebody you love? Yes, you have. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. If you have, Jesus, do, do, can I say this? Hey, y'all want y'all want one of these religious church? Y'all want a spiritual church? Which one y'all want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you haven't been unkind, children, listen to this. Husbands, listen to this. Besties, listen to this. And my best friend sitting back there. Listen to this, Melissa Berry. If you have ever been unkind to somebody you profess to love, you don't love. Them. What did it just say? Y'all just said it. Love is what? Kind. Patient. Patient and ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all don't want me right now. Hmm. So there's times as as my as my child was you the little girl, uh, 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 you know, I I I I I, I, would, I would I would be unkind to her, but I would I would, I would always go to the Bible and, and say it's all right because he told me it's better off. Ball the child. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear me? But the problem is, 90% of the time that you chasten your children, you're mad about something else. Y'all don't like me right now. Y'all don't like me. You ever notice when your mama, you did something wrong? Y'all ever notice this? Watch this now. Jay, where you going? Huh? Y'all ever notice this? Y'all ever notice sometimes? You got in trouble and you did something, you know mama was going to put that belt on you? Uh-huh. And she didn't put that belt on you? Uh-huh. Uh, and, and, y'all remember them? Y'all remember them? They were, were five and people between them. Y'all remember them days, right? You still got a woman, but you didn't get a woman? Because she wasn't married to nobody else. You just, act, you just made her, what, what did you do? You made her matter by doing something when she was already what? Y'all better stop me now. But you, so, so if, I'm, if I'm doing something to you because of somebody else, do I really love you? My God. Anybody hear me? Yeah. All right, repeat that. Y'all read to me, read to me. Come on, Pastor. Love is not jealous. Come on. Love is not jealous. Or, wait, wait, hold up, wait a minute. Love is not what? Jealous. I love my wife when I worry about another man talking to her. And her talking to another man, do I love him? Oh, Jesus, y'all ain't like me right now. Huh? Say that again, bitch. I love my wife, uh-huh. but I'm worried about her talking to another man, or uh, her, or uh, 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 another man talking to her, do I love my wife? Mm-hmm. Anybody here? This is what I'm telling you right now, necessary. Because what we're going to do right now, we're going to find the, the love of the image in which we should be. God ain't never jealous of my relationship with my wife. He's a jealous God. But he ain't going to do nothing to her because I put her in his spot. He's going to do something to me. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And when he do something to me, he's just going to check me and let me know that she's not as important as who? Yeah. Y'all going to stop me right now. Come on. See, we can't get jealous because we don't want to handle jealousy. We take, we take jealousy and we, and, we, and we take it out of context. 
See, y'all know how to text, but y'all don't know how to deal with context. Y'all better get this right here. <laughs> we take it out of context. Before there was texting, there was contexting. Hello, somebody. Read, 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 church. Or boastful. Or oh. bragging. What's this? I done messed up. I, I, I realize I ain't, I ain't said nothing about my wife. Good, don't wake up with Jesus no more because I got men out there looking at my wife because I talk about how good she is all the time. Guess what? I'm going to keep talking about her. Why? Because I love her. And what that mean? If they do try to talk to her, I love her so I ain't what? Jealous. Jesus. Huh? What did you say, please? I'm like, I ain't jealous. Oh, I ain't worried, but she ain't got to. I ain't got to. Because when you are operating in love, who gonna, who gonna take care? God. Hello, somebody. Business is what? Mine. Now, y'all gotta hear all this. All this is good because it's telling you that it, it, we're talking about it's necessary. It's necessary, but we want to get to know God. We gotta first know how to operate in real what? Love. God is love, and love is God. God, God say, love ain't jealous. What was that first one? Love is patient. Love is patient. Love is kind. Not jealous. How many times I done lied to myself, but I love you, but I'm not, but but but, but I'm not kind to you. Oh Jesus, this this is this, this, this is a hard lesson, ain't it? Yeah, come on. Yeah, cause, 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 cause you know, cause when I when I do that, I'm so I, on, I, I, put, I, I can't even put the mirror up right now, cause I'm so ugly, I break it, huh? Looking at myself in the mirror according to what, what love's supposed to be. If I put a mirror in front of me right now, I, I, it, I break it, huh? I'm not telling you this, and God's not telling you this because, because you're not doing it. He's telling you this because you are capable of doing it. He's telling you this. So don't sit here and worry about what you ain't been doing. Uh, you sit here and know that because God is telling me I can do it. Hello, somebody. And if I don't do it knowing it, that means I don't love God because he's the one that told me what's required to, do, to love him. That's right. Oh, Jesus. We all right, y'all? Yeah. Read, Pastor. I read, church. Or proud. Or proud. Or proud. What is proud? What, what, what is proud? If I had Mr. Barry up, could he tell you what proud is? As a matter of fact, since he's here, he's, yeah. he's not here that often. Maybe if I let him participate, he'll come back more often. Uh, 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 what's, that, what's that word to tell us we're proud? Uh, so. No. Awesome. What's the other key word you always tell us about? Oh, pride. Oh, Lord Jesus. Our biggest problem is pride. Pride. Barry always talking about your pride. He got two things. Stop talking to yourself. There you go. Amen. And your pride. You can never, the first thing God has to do is get you out of your personal ride. Anybody talk that? My personal ride means I'm riding on my personality. I'm riding on me as a person. Come on now. I'm riding on my property. Y'all know y'all these peas. Y'all right now. Huh? All these peas in front of my ride says I am full of pride. Personal. I'm on a personal ride. I'm on a property ride. This is mine. Look what I got that you ain't got. All these peas in front of in front of, in front of ride says I'm 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 I'm, I'm prideful. Pride and prideful are the same thing. Most of us are too prideful to really do ministry. Because the ministry, I got, I got, I got to take, I got to take that ugly story that God wrote into my lifetime story. I like that right there. That ugly story that God wrote into my lifetime story and reveal the ugly story to do ministry. And then I know it's a lifetime story because at the end of the lifetime story, it shows how the person that was a victim always ends up being victorious. But it shows what they did instead of what who God did. This is a God time story, not a lifetime story. We're on a God time channel, not a lifetime channel. 
And it's all necessary. Because what's going to happen in this place is necessary. Deacon, Deacon Rap, Deacon Rap called me the other day. He came up here the other day. And he kind of got kind of irritated with me. Ain't nobody called me or told me. But I know he was irritated with me because he went out for my calls this week. And, and then when I, when I asked him, he told me he had chemo every day, 24 hours a day for every day. Because I called him every day. I called him at night. I called him in the morning. But he said, I was doing chemo. So, I, so, so when he was doing chemo, that means he was doing chemo. But his chemo was he was pissed off at Bishop. <laughs> Y'all don't think I know? Deacon Ralph always answers my phone call. I call Deacon Ralph 1 o'clock in the morning, and you know he's going to call me back and say, Bishop, what you want? But when he didn't call me right back, I say, Deacon Ralph pissed off at Bishop. <laughs> you know why? Because he came up and he told me, did you tell, did everybody know? Can I say it? Did, did everybody know? Can I say it? Deacon Ralph has cancer, y'all. I don't know if he told everybody, but he came and told me last week. And, 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 and what happened with y'all, and, 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 and he's going to use this as a lesson to grow, because I told him he's not going to the elephant graveyard. What elephants do is, when they, when they get ready to die, they go back to the elephant graveyard. So he want to go back to West Palm Beach, but I'm not going to let him go back to the elephant graveyard, because God said he's going to live and not what? Yeah. Hello, somebody. That's right. Amen. Amen. Right. 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 And this church represents life. How do I know? Because a, a lot of the life that comes in this church is because of that man. Hello, Amen. somebody? Amen. Amen. Can, can we say that? Amen. Hello, somebody. You ain't, I don't care what your auntie say, your auntie say, your granddaddy say, or your, your auntie say. You're not going back to West Palm Beach. Lord, we're praying right now. Take that, take, take that leaving spirit. That is the element of graveyard. Amen. I'm going back to die with my family. Not in this. We are your family. We are a family of life and not death. Hello, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. So, so didn't you rather marry this woman? Oh, <laughs> You're supposed to say that. Because he told me, he said, Bishop, 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 and I gave him what was necessary. He came up and said, we were standing right here. He was standing there. I was standing here. He said, Bishop, I got colon. He said, Bishop, I got colon cancer. I said, oh, yeah, I said, we'll talk about it later. He said, I said, but you know that, that ain't unto death. And I went in the office. I gave him what was necessary. But that was not what he wanted. We want empathy. We want attention. We want, did, 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 did. Don't you know when we hit a lot, this goes for all of us, when we hit a lot of that situation, we want somebody to, 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 to at, least, at least feel sorry for us for at least for a little while. I ain't got that in me because I'm too busy to living, baby. I got things, I got things me and you got to do to live, not die. Yes, yes. Come on now. So I'm not going to sit here and, 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 and if you're whining, you can ask Mr. Barrett, if you're whining and crying and whining, I'm not going to call you about that. That's not me. Life don't live in dead places. Life plants in dead places and then it leaves and then let one plant grow where, where you will leave that uninspired place and become and, and come back to who you really were. An inspiring place. Hello, somebody. Y'all read. Or Ruth, one of the twelve and all that to all them people on Facebook. We all reach you, we all right. Do you laugh? Do you laugh? I remember we was on the beach and he saw me and said, Bishop, you didn't have to say all that in for all. But he know I love him. I can talk to him like this because he knows I love him. But anyway, life is not so some of y'all say I'm rude to him right now, but no, I'm not. I wasn't rude. I'm rude to that spirit that's trying to discourage him. I was, I'm rude to that spirit that's trying to take my deep out of this place where, where that he adds he adds life to, and that is the spirit of what Jesus. And we know he's delivered because he's added to him a deliverance sinner. Yes, yes, yes. And it's necessary for him to go through so he can show the other deacons because right now some of the deacons 
faith might be wavering because Deacon Terry just left us, so some of the deacon's faith might be wavering. God says, can I use a deacon right now to, to, to let man press a, a, a death on to show them that, 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 that I, what man says don't no matter? Can I use a deacon right now that I can trust you around? Because the, the, the deacon's a word right now. They don't even matter no more. And it says, love is not jealous. Love is never jealous. Love is never boastful. Love is never proud. Love is never rude. If I, if I have a love that can be interrupted, it ain't the love of God. It ain't the love that God has taught me. But that other love, man's love, was necessary. Y'all hear me? It was necessary. Let's see what it says here. 
It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. Do we let, let it get on my nerves? Absolutely. Just like the rest of y'all. But you know what? I tolerate it. Why? And see, it ain't tolerated by, by not saying nothing to her. I tolerate it by doing Maintaining the responsibilities that I'm supposed to, y'all better hear what I'm trying to say. See, y'all get irritated with church and y'all stop giving. My Lord. My God. Y'all get irritated with church and y'all stop coming. My God. So then you want me to believe you love the Spirit of Jesus. My Lord. Anybody hear me right now? Uh-huh. Kind of just irritated me. But but I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't show the irritation. I had to show an example. That even when you're irritated, huh, you still do what you're supposed to what? Do if you love them. Anybody hear me? I gave you that because because I had to you had to be an example. She said, Grandpa, I got eight dollars. If I give you eight dollars, when you pass that me ten dollars, so I can put ten dollars in church. I don't just want to put eight dollars, I want to put ten dollars. I was irritated. So in my irritation, when I did one, what I was even asking for, I sent a 20. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Amen. See, love, love does not, love does not just do enough. Love goes beyond. Somebody say beyond. Beyond. Love don't just do enough. Love goes beyond. Say beyond. Beyond. So it says it keeps no record. Though I just pointed it out to you, she can come back next week and I ain't gonna remind her what she asked me today. Come on, Anybody hear me? Uh-huh. I'm talking about eternal love. I ain't talking about a love that, that I'm looking for an excuse not to love. Y'all better hear what I just said. Huh? Uh-huh. If anybody got an excuse not to I got I got I got a, I can make excuses every week not to come drive 200 miles to come to church. Y'all say I ain't got no gas money. How about it cost me seventy dollars in gas to get here, and seventy dollars to get back? Oh that could be my excuse. But I, God know He going He know I'm not looking for excuse, so He'll He'll He He, he always makes sure I have enough to get where I'm going because He know I'm not looking for an excuse. But if you're looking for an excuse, He ain't gonna give you what you need to get there because He know you need an excuse. It's necessary yes, yes, yes. for you to see that you ain't nothing but an excuse maker. It's necessary for you to see that you don't even know what you should be seeking. It's necessary for you to go down so, 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 so you ain't got nowhere to go but up. You better hear me. It's necessary for you to be without so when God gives you something you, you know you know what you'll be thankful for what you got because you know what it's like to be without oh it's my. necessary oh my. Oh my. anybody hear me right now yeah. it's necessary for you to get sick so when you're aware you're thankful that you're not told somebody oh, sick yeah. it's necessary oh, you better hear the word of God right now you better realize that everything oh, in your yeah. life is necessary It's necessary Thank for you to you, go through Jesus. what you go through. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Oh, my God. I think about it. I think about it. Here I was. Here I was. Uh, a college graduate guy. Got all these degrees. And, and, and here I was sitting up in prison. My Lord. And I thought I was in prison. So I learned how to become a pastor. My God. But it's necessary because there was a man named Larry Smith that was devil worshiper. That if I had not been there. He still be a devil worshiper today, but it was necessary for me to be there to capture one for God. You better hear the word of God. Yeah. You can never make me doubt because I see what God does in my life is necessary. What God does in your life is necessary. Get out of what you need. Get out of what you want, and get in the place of knowing that God put it there because yeah, it's necessary. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. It's necessary. Yes, God. It's necessary. Somebody want to pray for me back over. I'm going to say, why y'all bothering them? Bishop getting down. And y'all couldn't bother me. You need to be in church. Y'all need to be bothering me. It ain't necessary. It ain't necessary for you to be asking me right now. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. 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 Y'all better hear what I'm saying
It ain't over. Y'all know what I said? It'll be over. God, thank God it's over. I'm just waiting on him. Come on. But he hit over to God. So but when he gets down here and he says, love never gives up. God puts us in a give up position over and over and over and over. And when you stop giving up on people, now you know you're in love. Anybody heard that? You stop giving up on people. When you stop giving up on people, that means you're ready to stop giving up on God. How do I give up, give up on God? I make excuses. Every time I make an excuse and not do, see, I want I want to walk with God. God say, how can I trust you to walk with me in places that you ain't gonna understand when you ain't go to the right place? Uh-huh. How can I trust you to walk with me in places and circumstances that you won't even understand when you can't even hit the basis of going to church right? But you want to preach. You can't get the basis of, of, of being helping somebody who needs help. But you want to preach. You can't get the basis of, 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 of believing in the one that I sent that's in trouble. But you want to preach. Come on now. You got to at least do the things you can do. Come on now. God said, after you've done all the right things, then stand and I'll take you places that you don't understand. You better hear me? Yes. After you've done all the right things, the things that you can do, he said, now, now stand and I'll take you to places that you don't understand. Come on now. I don't know what I'm doing. I ain't never been trained to be a pastor. Ain't nobody tell me to do outreach for God. That's it. Uncle Mickey came and showed me the people downtown were living in a city. I said, wow. Ain't nobody here on Sunday feeding them. Five years ago, we started feeding. Then we've been to Pompano. Now we, now we down at the bus station. Yep. But you know, how do we know? How do we know God told us to do it? We have not stopped. That's Amen. right. That's right. Come on, right. How do I know God gave wake up with Jesus to me? Because it has not stopped. Yeah. Come on now. That's how you know. That's right. When it can, when you do not let it get it per, hit it. Permanently interrupted. That's right. Hear me? God will turn a corner for the purpose of the, of the people. Because sometimes the people will fall in love with the man in the process and forget about God. Hello, somebody. Yes, 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 true. Come on, Bishop. So now, as we hear this, God says, I, I keep putting you in the same thing over and over to find out when you're, when you're going to realize that you ain't supposed to never give up on God. And the way I never give up, give up on God, I never give up on the situation. Oh, come on now. Yes. Yes. I never give up on the situation. Yes. Come on now. Not going to sound like I want to deal with Jaden. I guess that's a bad excuse. Everybody that's knows. a bad excuse. Everybody knows me and Jaden. Everybody knows me and Jaden know that. <laughs> Everybody, you can use anybody. Anybody but Jaden. But Jaden. <laughs> you can use. But but you know, but, but really. You think Ralph? I can do. I can do better than that. You know how many times I want to give up on myself? <laughs> huh? I never forget. I never forget when, when, when um, Minister Gerald. I called him one day. He wasn't even a member of the church, going to the church. And I called him. I said, Gerald, I need to talk. I said, Man, I'm not pastoring no more because I can't keep getting high and, 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 and pastoring these people. He said, You're going to let the devil win? Oh, my God. My That's the word that came out of his mouth it was like six, seven years ago. He said, You're going to let the devil win? Mm. Jesus. You know how many people you feed every morning? You know the power of the sermon that you preach? And you're going to let this stop all of that? You're going to let the devil win? Oh, my Lord. Come on now. And so what he, what he told me was, what he told me was, don't give up on yourself, Bishop. Amen. Amen. Huh? And then it says, love never loses faith. Uh-huh. So I got I to gotta go to a place and go through a battle like I was about to lose faith in me, but God placed an angel in my life. Mm. And an unexpected angel. Come on, somebody. Huh? 
Praise the Lord. An unexpected angel. And he and he and, and when my faith was at zero, all he added was another zero. Hello, somebody. Because uh-huh. he's not God. But zero came to help zero, and that's what needs to happen. I don't need to come and take credit for you going forward. I need to come and stand and stay out of the way so God can get the credit for you going forward. And if I take credit, that means you'll turn to me when you should be turning to God. Oh my God. Oh my God. My Lord. It's gonna turn to me. I left, I left Deacon Ralph on, on a limb because I knew where he was. The only one that can, I can, I can tell him this is not unto death. Now, the only one that can, can guarantee that it's not unto death was who? God. So I had to leave him by himself. Oh, Lord. The only reason I kept calling him, my wife told me. I'm concerned about Ram. Can you please come down? Can you please come down? I'm concerned about Ram. I said, I'll be with Ralph in the sermon on Sunday. But I did call because, because, because happy wife, happy life. And my wife was not Amen. happy. My, ha- my wife was not happy as long as I hadn't talked Amen. around. This lady loves y'all so much that she gets on my nerves. Tell them somebody. Amen. It says, love is always, 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 is another, another word of never not being never. Amen. Always hopeful. Yes. So did it tear left us. But guess what? He still got healed. Yeah. Healing is when the flesh can't make you feel bad no more. Anybody heard what I just said? When I am sick, that means my flesh is hurting. Am I right? Amen. And when I get well, that means my flesh ain't hurt no more. So what well, that means I'm healed. So healing is when the flesh cannot hurt me no more. Amen. Anybody hear me right now? So anything, anything what I'm trying to tell you right now, what I'm trying to tell you right now, everything that you are going through, God said, keep putting it to it over and over to find out when you're going to want eternity, when you're going to never not love. Come on. Everything you've been through is necessary. And it's sad, Pastor, because it, it wasn't necessary for you to get healed. It wasn't necessary for you to find a husband or a wife. It wasn't necessary for you to be a good parent. It wasn't necessary for you to be a good pastor. It was necessary for you to learn how to live in heaven with God. That's what it's all about. All this stuff down here is frivolous unto God. The only thing that matters is can I live? If I can live with God now and indeed under these circumstances with these distractions and I can let God become my distraction from the distraction and tell him my distraction be distracted from God. He said, now you're ready to live with me. All necessary. All necessary. God say, if you can, if you can live with me, if you can live with me through the pressures of sickness, if you can live with me through the pressures of being lied on, if you can live with me through the pressures of all these things that are going on in your life. Amen, my God. I ain't got to worry about you. How, how you gonna behave in heaven? What you say? Come on now. So everything that you're going through. I know y'all ain't liking me today, y'all. I like this sermon. Good it's work. Right. Love you, bitch. Good work. Everything that you're going through, you. everything that you're going through is, am I going to let this interrupt my relationship with God? My God. My God. I remember when I would mess up to some odds, I'd come home and try to make sure my wife was all right. I called Pastor Lisa and let her ignore me for, for a couple of days to make sure she was all right. I, I, I'd avoid my grandkids because I didn't want them to know what I'd been doing. But God said, you're going to keep doing this until you concern, concern yourself with whether or not I'm all right. All right. Yes. Amen. Until you concern yourself with how God is through, through what you're going through. Come on now. All of us is necessary to see if, 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 if there's anything or anybody else that will make you leave. You'll never leave God to make sure they're all right. Oh God. God don't like me right now. Good. Necessary. What, what does necessary mean to you, D? Oh what does necessary mean to you? I said, I'm going to say you for last because you might preach. Coward. What does necessary mean to you? Come in, come in, come in. Come in. Come in. You see, 
get one yesterday, girl. You got to go to how, how you go to college, and you got you got one of the best football programs in the in the country. Come on, and you got tickets to go to games free, and she don't go to one football game in four years. How you gonna catch a football? How you gonna catch a professional football player if you don't go to the games? I told you, I told you to go there and get one of them boys that going to the pros, pretty as you I told you that. She went to one football game before you. How you gonna catch a man, a, a football player? You don't go to. You want the three names? Okay, the three. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. That's all she right now. But anyway, what does necessary mean to you? Never leave God. Never leave God. That's a new necessary. Amen. That's it. That's a new necessary. And I, I was going to ask everybody. Anybody want to say what necessary mean to you? Stay right here. Huh? Something that must be done. Never leave God. Never leave God. I must keep my mind on God. Mr. Barry? God's will. Never leave God. God's will. So yeah. you are a spiritual vessel now. So stop. Stop letting that. And you know, you got, you got a side of you. People might not know you hate you. You know that. You know they might not know that, right? And, and y'all get mad real quick. Y'all go to talking real. Can she be Is she pretty? Mm -hmm. My baby. But anyway, what I'm trying to say to you, like Barry said, whatever happens, God's will. And if it happened, it was what? God. Necessary. It was necessary. Necessary, yeah. It was necessary. I'm like, I'm like, y'all even like me. I'm like, I'm like, what in the world is this God on Stephanie doing? Got, I don't know the boyfriend or, but it's it, it got to be a buster. And, 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 and now she got a little more sitting here, and, and, and the buster was necessary. That's right. Because I couldn't live without you, little more. I couldn't live without you. Right, that's right. And so everything that we think is wrong and out of order is what? Right. It's necessary. God said it's necessary for us to live beyond what we want. And when we, because if we live according to what we want, baby, we hate everybody. If we didn't have somebody, watch this, we, we look at God covering us, but we don't look at God checking us while he covers us. Oh, there it is. We like that covering part, but we don't want God to check us while he, huh? And so the way he checks us is let uncomfortable things come in our lives. That is what? Necessary. Let me see. Everybody blessed today? Amen. I got to get off my plan. I gotta get off my plan and realize my plan is fighting what's necessary. The blessings that God has for me are being delayed because I won't accept His plan for my life. And, and plan plan one is walking through the what, Joe? Talk to me. Walking through the pearly gates. Pearly gates. This brother wouldn't even talk when he walked in the church. Now we can't shut him up. Amen. Bible study, he's sitting back there by the door. And we ask him a question. What? If I asked him, he'd sit back by the door. I said, Joe, what does necessary mean to you? He pearly said, Pearly gates. gates. For four years, all he was saying to him was Pearly Gates and Main Man. That's right. Pearly Gates and Main Man. But today, today, guess what he is today? I teach him, and he teaches me. Y'all hear me? So you gotta understand that when you become a pastor, it's necessary for the for, for, for the for the members to teach you because you're just like them, one of God's children. Yeah. I am to be I am to teach and to be taught by that which I teach. Yes. Anybody hearing this? Amen. But pastors, pastors don't want to do that because they want to be one step below God. Help somebody. But we're all the same. And we'll talk about this later. But Jesus said, don't put me on a pedestal. Because you and I are the same. When I came down as, as man, I came down for man to be like man to pose to what? Be. Anybody hear me? When God said, I'm no respect to person, Jesus was a person. He didn't say I'm no respect to person except Jesus, did he? Did Sister Mom, did he? Anybody put on this, 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 this birthday suit uh -huh. are the same unto God, this child. This child. And Jesus came and said, I'm going to show you what's necessary 
in order to live with God, not like Mama told you. Mama told you, if you do good, you can. Jesus said, if you find his will, you will live with him. Now, you thought I was worth saving? Think about those words. And you came into my life. Think about that. You thought I was worth keeping? Hallelujah. Sound like Evangelist Devil. Hallelujah. And you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. And you sacrificed your life so I could be free, so I could be whole, so I could tell everyone I know. Glory. Sing. He think he can sing. It's all about me and Jaden. Oh no, don't forget it. Don't forget it. That's all right. When he get in that high school, Jaden. 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 <laughs> but you always sit there with Grandpa, all right? <laughs> oh, 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 you're taking sleep. You're messy. Now, see, that took my church. I'm going to keep my grandson. <laughs> and you did. You did. You did. You did. You did. You did. Ain't going to make him a minister next week. <laughs> Yes. 
Y'all hear that? When you move, when God said move, God knew their conversation. I'm just riding down the road, and all of a sudden, something said, call there. When you call when God says call, it's not about you getting glory, but it's about God getting glory because he told you what to do and when to do it. And also about what is necessary. Yes. Um, we get so uh, hardwired to not giving up on God, but we've got to remember not giving up on people is not giving up on God. Amen. Loving people is loving God. Yes. Serving people is serving God. You understand what I'm saying? Huh? Do I need to repeat that for y'all? Yeah, it's never giving up on people is never, is never giving up on God. Loving on people is loving God. You hear me? Do you hear what I'm saying? But you're so hardwired, just bypass people going straight to God. You're going to take a detour straight to God. Get rerouted, go on above and all around it just to get to God, but forgetting the pathway to God, which is loving on his people. That's the pathway. That's right, my God, we bless God. Stand to your feet. We bless God for that word. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless God. Bless God. We thank God for using Bishop Robinson to deliver such a word as this. Amen. Amen. It is necessary to go through the things you are going through to get to where you got to be. To get what God has called you to be and what he has called you to do. Amen. Amen. It is necessary, saints. It is truly, truly necessary. And I don't know, um, we just going to keep hard drilling it home to this hard wire in you. We're going to keep drilling it in you. Amen. Until I get more gray hairs in my head. Amen. I will keep drilling it in because that's what I was called to do. It say repetition is the key. They say repetition, once you say it over and over and over and over, you finally get it. So as much as we can tell you love others more than you love yourselves, yes. tend to one another, we're going to keep on doing it. Praise God. Yes. Heavenly Father, sing your hands to the office. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to bless our bishop, our apostle. Amen. Restore him, Lord God. Any virtue, anything that has left him, Lord God, we ask that you restore him 100 times fold, Lord God. Continue to let his path only be led by you and not man, and that he leads on your understanding and not his own. We ask that you keep his wife and him covered, Lord God. Let the heavenly angels encamped around them, Lord God. Lord God, the, the weapons that are formed against them, Lord God, they shall not prosper. We bless you and we thank you in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, all right, all right, saints. This is part of the service that you all can take part in. Yeah.